Hey guys, Miss VT here. I was just looking at this painting I made using coffee and only coffee. Yes, you heard that right. Coffee. So, in today's Wednesday video, we are talking about doing a monochromatic value painting. <sighs> That's a mouthful. Monochromatic. Mono meaning one. Chromatic meaning color. Monochromatic. One color. One. One color. How many colors? I don't know. It's monochromatic. One color. I don't understand how many colors in a monochromatic painting. One color. Monochromatic. One color. Value painting, meaning we're using more than just one value of one color. We're using our one color in multiple different lightnesses and darknesses. Darknesses. Doesn't sound right. But we are making monochromatic value paintings using coffee. Monochromatic value paintings using coffee. So, monochromatic, one color, value using lightness and darkness, coffee, the delicious morning beverage. Here's what you're gonna need if you would like to recreate coffee paintings. First off, you will need a piece blank paper. Just like in the watercolor video, this paper can be watercolor paper, copy paper. It can be any type of paper. Just remember, you're using something wet, so if it's anything except for watercolor paper, it's gonna get wrinkly. The second thing you will need is a bowl of coffee. Mm, that smells like breakfast. Third supply, that's six. Third supply you will need, optional a roll of tape. You're gonna wanna use masking tape or washi tape. Otherwise, it's gonna stick to your paper. All right, so guys, why are we doing coffee painting this week? Let me tell you. This week's Ms. VT art challenge is to create a value scale using objects you find in your house. A value scale is not how much value an artwork has. Ms. VT, your painting is trash. It's only valued at two cents. Value in art is basically the lightness or darkness of a color. This paper is light. This coffee is dark. They have a different value. And all of the in-between colors are your in-between values. Remember this from your Martin Luther King drawing? So your values are going to be light to dark and all of the values in between. When you're coffee painting, it's all about value because you don't have color. Everything on my painting is brown. Or, I mean, it looks kind of yellowy, but it's brown, okay? Light brown, super light brown, medium brown, dark brown, even darker brown. Lots of brown. Lots of brown. These different values are created by layering the coffee on the paper. So the first thing that you're really gonna see me doing here is laying out my horizon line. And that's where the land is going to meet the sky. Even though we can't see it because of the trees, it's still there. And that's where I am assuming these rocks meet, um, even though it's hidden. The next thing is I'm figuring out where the line of those trees are. And then that gives me a guide for how tall I want to paint them. Then I'm just gonna go ahead and start roughing in all of the other shapes. All right, so the next thing we're gonna wanna do is go ahead and get started making our coffee. I'm making my coffee in a mocha pot because that's what I have, but any, any sort of coffee maker works. All right, so I'm pouring my coffee over some ice cubes to hopefully cool it down before I start painting because hot coffee is going to mess up your paint brushes. It's the, the heat is gonna mess up the glue that holds the hairs together. So you can see these are all my supplies, paintbrush, tape, coffee, and I've added one extra salt. So the first thing you wanna do is use that tape 
to go all the way around the edges. This gives you a nice clean line when you're finished. It's totally optional though. And you can see here the salt, big fat salt grains. You're gonna create a really cool effect. I'll show you later. All right, so using my large square shaped brush, I am creating a wash. That is where you just cover the entire paper in paint or in our case in coffee. Now the coffee wasn't as dark as I thought it was gonna be so the wash didn't end up the same way I thought it would um, and it also made all of my sketch disappear. So I started with the horizon because I wanted to remember where that was before I continued with the rest since that line completely disappeared. Now I did make a new batch of coffee because I thought maybe I just had a bad batch. No, all coffee paints just as light. So now that it is cool, I'm going to go in and start with the background. So the background of the painting is the stuff that's behind the subject. Usually it's going to be a little bit more blurry and there's something called atmospheric perspective that dictates that what's in the background is gonna be lighter too. And that's because you have more atmosphere, more space between you and that object. And so it's not gonna be as bright. In our case, the value is gonna be lighter. So now I'm putting the salt down. And what the salt does is it pushes away the water. There's a lot of science in art. And um, I went to blow dry it to speed up the drying process and of course, I scattered salt everywhere and then blow dried my coffee bowl and made a big mess. So, you know, you live and you learn. But I'm drying it because otherwise this drying process takes forever and I wanted to finish this painting in less than an hour. So I'm drying, drying, drying. After it's dry, scrape all the salt off and you can see this really cool effect that the salt left. It pushed away all the coffee and left these weird white spots. And that looks really cool if you can get the coffee color even darker. So continuing with that atmospheric perspective, the stuff in the background I painted first because that's going to be lightest. And then when I do the second coat of coffee, the value gets more intense. It gets darker. And that's going to be the closer it is to you, the darker it's going to appear. So I've also switched paint brushes. Always pick the paintbrush that works best for the job that you have to do. When I was just filling out these big shapes, I went with a big fat brush. Now that I want a little bit more precision, I'm going in with this pointed brush. And then on, on the left hand side here, you can see I'm, I'm starting to put in where those treetops are from my original picture. Because remember, I'm, I'm not doing this from memory. I'm looking at a photograph or a reference. Um, if you don't look at a reference, chances are you will mess up uh, unless you are just an absolute master. I'm not a master yet, maybe you are. So once again, <laughs> I'm not a master. I just spilled paint everywhere with my blow dryer. So I have decided, well, life told me we we're going to have a mess. So let's make the mess work. So now what I'm doing is I'm using my hand like a diffuser so that the paint gets an indirect airflow that helps it to not be blown away across my paper. Um, just going from all sides. Getting that dry so we're not here forever. More mistakes. <laughs> happy little, not mistakes, happy little accidents. Let's channel some Bob Ross. All right, it's dry. Next layer. So that line I originally drew for the trees on the other side, I'm putting it back in. Now, I only had one hill, one mountain on that left-hand side, um, which is why I did the trees in the last layer. So I'm going over them again. And I'm trying to make it not appear too obvious that they're going to be darker than their counter side. Also, one thing I found with the coffee that's different from normal paint, you don't get an even application. Um, all of the, the color tends to go to the edges 
and not the middle. Now that happens sometimes with paint too, with watercolor paint, but even more so with the coffee. And I bet this has to do with the science, with the chemistry of coffee and of paint and of how big the particles are that are in the water and and what the chemicals are that are actually in there. All right, so the salt made the drying process take a million years. I kid you not, I have this footage sped up 2000% and I still had to chop out like 30 minutes of footage. It took forever. So I got a real diffuser for my hair dryer and I just diffused the painting. That way the salt wouldn't go everywhere while it was drying. But it went everywhere anyways. So I'm taking it outside to go knock all the salt off. Now it is salt free. I'm just kind of scrubbing the last of the residue off. And it is time for the next layer. So what I was trying to do with that salt was there was a really cool um, area underneath the trees where the sun was hitting it and I was thinking, well, maybe the salt can recreate that effect. Work smart, not hard. If the salt can paint that effect for me, then I don't have to paint it. It sort of worked. Blow drying it again, trying to speed up this process. If you don't have a blow dryer, you just have to wait. That's why I had that blow dryer at the back of the classroom when we were doing watercolor. So that if you wanted to do another layer, you could blow dry it. Alright, next step. This is called the foreground. Foreground is stuff that is right up at the front of the painting. It's going to have the most detail. It's going to be the, the darkest because it's right in front of you and usually it's what you want to focus on. So my foreground are these bushes and pine trees that are right up along the water's edge. So I'm doing them last. I'm working from lightest to darkest, from the lightest value to the darkest value. Just depositing color on the paper. So this painting is looking very impressionistic. I'll put a picture of an impressionist painting on here so you can see what I'm talking about when I say impressionistic. The, the paper's also starting to wrinkle. Even though I'm using watercolor paper, it's wrinkling way too much for me. So I am going to tape down the entire paper and I'm actually gonna tape it straight to my table so that it can't move at all. And this really helped me to finish these trees because the coffee wasn't flying all over the paper. And time to diffuse it. And it's dry. So I thought the coffee would give me much darker values than it did. And I was kind of disappointed. So I decided to go back in with a, with a brown colored pencil to try to get some of those really dark values that the coffee couldn't get. And this is the only place I use something that is not coffee. And as you can see, I'm, I'm really not holding the pencil the way you would normally color, and that's that I can get these same loose, impressionistic lines that I'm getting with the paint. And I'm actually going over what I just colored with the coffee to try to blend it even better and get those really nice dark values. And time to blow dry again every single layer has to be dry before you can do the next layer all 
All right, this is the best part of any watercolor painting and any coffee painting. This is where you peel off the tape to reveal those clean, crisp lines. These are gonna be your edges and oh, I live for this last step. The anticipation is killing me. Goodbye tape. All right, top's not gonna be so dramatic because it's already our lightest value. So you can barely tell the difference. This is the good one. <gasps> Beautiful. Look at that. I love it. So clean. And I, I'm not holding it well enough. Come on, Miss VT, hold on to your painting. This one's good too. Sometimes this doesn't work. If you pull the tape in the wrong direction, sometimes it'll rip your paper. So always pull away from the paper. And the last edge, look at that. So perfect. And that is a painting made completely with coffee. A monochromatic value scale painting in coffee. You now need to fill out your KWL chart. Okay, what do you know already? Coffee works a lot like watercolor paint. You already know how to watercolor paint. We did it together in class. What do you already know about working with something so liquidy? What do you already know about coffee? Two, W, what do you want to know? And if you don't wanna know anything, lie to me. Maybe you want to know uh, if my painting smells good. It does. Maybe you want to know if this painting makes me hungry because it smells so good. It does. Maybe you want to know what other supplies you can paint with. There are lots of other household products that you can paint with and I will put a link, let's say right around here, to a list of lots of different stuff that you can paint with in your house. Maybe you want to know what's what's different about painting with coffee versus paint. Like why do we pay for paint when we could just paint with coffee? And last, but not least, what did you learn? Maybe you didn't know that you could keep layering coffee or paint on top of each other to build up stronger values. Maybe you never looked at the vocab wall in class and you have never heard the word value before and you just learned that today. <laughs>